always, I like to welcome all our friends who are watching us today on YouTube. Uh, we are so glad that you are part of our Salem family and you are in worship with us today. Let us now enter into worship with a call to worship. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. People of God who do who people of God who do you come to worship? We come to worship the one true God. How will we worship? Not with words alone, but by living justice and love. Come, come, you who belong to God. Come, you who are foolish to the in the eyes of the world. Come and abide in God's tent, in God's, in God's heart, heart, now and, and forever. forever. And at this time, uh, I'd like to invite you all to be part of this time of uh, uh, confession. Uh, confession uh, is something that we don't uh, do all the time here at Salem, but uh, I think uh, around issues like the one that we will be dealing this morning, I think is very appropriate. So please enter in this time in a prayerful mode. I will be leading this prayer and you will be just answering during them you with your presence. Far too often, O oh God, we desire to look wise in the eyes of the world. We have not spoken the truth with our hearts. We have said and done hurtful things. We have not accepted others. We have forgotten to use mercy and love toward those who are different from us. We have not been humble. We have not walking in your justice. Forgive us and help us live into becoming the people you created us and called us to be. People of justice and love and truth and humility. Let us pray now in silence. God has called us and bless us when we live God's ways and not the world. God's love embrace us even when we fall short of what God desire for our lives and action. Know that the God of blessing loves and forgives you with a fierce tenderness. And in so knowing, may your lives and soul be transformed. Amen.
scripture readings today come from Genesis 1, verse 27, Micah 6, verse 8, Isaiah 51, verses 4 and 5, and Revelation 7, verse 9. <clears throat> so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what, is, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily, and salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Th thanks be to God. This month, uh, uh, today is our second Sunday, actually, but this entire month we will be uh, dealing with uh, a difficult issue who has been impacting greatly and increasingly our lives, our communities, and our families, and our country, actually the, our world at all different level. And uh, what we are dealing with is with the uh, polarization and uh, hostility that has been uh, escalating, sometime in some places out of control, with uh, dramatic consequences, uh, especially hurting uh, uh, the weakest among us, hurting especially uh, the smallest, the youngest, and the people who struggle the most. Uh, maybe because uh, also they are sick or they have uh, other kind of problems. Now, the reason why we talked about this issue in church is because the Bible has a lot to say about this and also because Christ himself came to earth uh, and spent his entire life to bring peace and reconciliation and then he went all the way to the cross and gave his life so that we become one. That was, as we saw last week, his actually main mission, so that we are going to be one. Now, I'm not here to talk about politics. I'm not here to talk about ideology, culture, sociology, psychology. That's not what I study. That's not what I know. I'm not even able to do a good job of any of this, and I should not. But what I'm here uh, to do is to talk about how this uh, situation that is part of our lives is actually impacting our own lives and our own faith and church life and uh, our spirit and how impacted our spiritual health. And I think we've been seeing serious consequences on our own spirituality and our own souls because of what's happening in the world and in our country, in our community. Today's specific theme is actually justice. Justice uh, is, in a special way, I want to talk about God's justice, not a generic justice. I'm not going to talk about laws or uh, legal system, but I'm going to talk about uh, what uh, 
uh, God thinks justice is supposed to be. What is the Bible saying about uh, justice? Now, when, when I say the word justice, I'm afraid that uh, 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 people's mind goes in many different directions. Uh, I think the word justice, unfortunately and sadly, has actually been polarized and politicized uh, to, to be used for one agenda or another. But justice is really, more than anything else, a God's word. And is a very important idea throughout the Bible. And start with the creation and actually go through the entire Bible until the very end. And so that's why today we had several scripture. One is actually the creation of mankind. And the last verses is actually coming from the last book, the book of Revelation, where we see the last vision of what God thinks humanity should look like. There is a, a theologian, his name is Walter Stuff, that uh, I think uh, uh, simplify what is justice in just one sentence and that i like to share with you. One should never treat persons or human beings as they have less worth than they do. It's that simple. Sometimes we think about justice as a very complicated thing with many, many ideas, but this is the main concept. This is it's what justice is about. Treat everybody as people of worth. From start, as I mentioned, the Bible is very clear about justice and about treating everybody as they are have the same worth. And uh, this idea, as I mentioned, start with the creation, right? God created uh, all mankind in his image. It's that simple. So that means every kind, every people, every tribe, every nation has equal worth, equal dignity, respect, and actually should be treated equally in the same way. And God intended us to live uh, in oneness. And the image that God always used for that is the image of himself, the Trinity, right? God, Son, and Holy Spirit is three in one. And that is the image that is being given to humanity to live by. So then what happened is that the prophets later in the Old Testament uh, uh, were talking to a nation, guess what? Really di divided, very polarized, and filled with hostility. And uh, that was God that sent this people to actually bring his judgment toward Israel. And uh, the words were very clear. Prophet has to say, bring this very difficult yet very clear message. If you don't turn around, things are going to get bad for you. If you don't live with peace, if you don't take care of the last and the least in your world, if you let, at that time, were especially the orphan, the widows, the, uh, the strangers, the poor, those were the group of people that were suffering the most. And so God would send a message through the prophet and say, if you are not going to take care of these people, I tell you, sooner than you want, you are not going to be able to stand as a, as a nation, as one. You're going to fall apart. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. And soon after the judgment came, uh, Israel did fall apart. And the temple was destroyed. And the people were taken to exile. Of course, the majority of the people in Israel, they were not suffering for being mistreated, they, might, they were fine and nobody would uh, in any way double guess their worth in life. They lived in complete denial that there was a problem. And that's why they let things going and going and going until things got really bad. And so came Jesus, who spent all his life, all his life to welcome everybody exactly as they are. But also he spent all the life to speak the truth toward people who were not treating everyone equally. People that were not recognizing the worth of each and every human being as they are. And then uh, because even all that was not enough, uh, 
uh, and reconciliation was not happening. He went on the cross and on the cross uh, took uh, the sin of humanity. And on the cross, uh, he uh, called for forgiveness and for, uh, for the ability to actually create that reconciliation. But the people who were, again, in denial that there was a problem, what did they do? They went all the way and trying to cancel him from uh, human history. But what happened was that after three days, Jesus was resurrected. And that what he did and what he spent his life for went on and on to create a community, a growing community that keep on growing through the entire world that kept on carry on that idea of justice for all and love for all. And uh, I think uh, come then the very last part of the Bible, which is Revelation, where we see uh, God's vision for the redeemed one, for what the world is going to look like, what is God's dream in the end of the days when this will be gone. And here comes uh, where it say, after this, God say, I looked, and there before me a great multitude, and no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. This is such a picture of uh, enormous joy and gratitude and worship for all these people so different from each other that were coming in front of God just as they were. I wanted to show you uh, a quick video here that you probably saw already because uh, I understand this video was watched by over 100 million people. A video that I think it sort of illustrates the, the vision that God has for our humanity. This is little Maxwell and uh, Finnegan, two years old boys. <laughs> My friend, you are just adorable. I think the reason why this, uh, we all love this video, first of all, because those two are so freaking cute, right? But the other reason is because uh, what they represent to us, they represent the way that we would like the world to go, how we would like to treat each other. They sort of uh, represent God's vision. And I think God put that desire and that earning within us uh, and uh, it's uh, so hard when we don't live that way. In reality, our world is very far from that vision of God, and uh, we are far from uh, uh, living and working toward that vision. And I think, once again, just like in Israel, just like everywhere in the world, uh, some group are more marginalized and uh, they uh, have less right and they pay a higher price for this situation which we are. And uh, sometimes it's because of the color of their skin, sometimes because of uh, their sexuality, sometimes it's because the gender. It's a, all a different combination, sometimes because there are special needs, sometimes because their life brought them to be different from the majority. They had to fight every day for basic rights. And we saw this, and I think uh, we don't think that all of us needs to be accountable for this situation. Now, the reason why this happened in our world, uh, uh, it's uh, really connected to a word that we find in the scripture. And is, the word is sin. Sin is uh, anti-love. Sin is anti-justice and being living with no mercy, with no humility. 
We think of sin as just uh, breaking the rules, right? We think of sin like you are not supposed to do this, 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 and that. But it's a lot more than that. Sin is get hold of your soul and carry your soul in place where you should not go. And hatred and shame and uh, anger, jealousy, and all that good stuff comes out subtly from uh, the sin of now looking at each and every human being in the image of God. I was thinking about, I was reading a lot about this uh, uh, theme and this subject and uh, some of the struggle that people in this country face every single day. And based on that, I was thinking about my life and I was thinking, well, look at that. I go through my day every day and I never, ever have to think about the, skull, the color of my skin. I have an accent. I have an accent, and people usually lovely, most of the time lovely, make fun of me about my accent. But it's never a source of discrimination for me. It's never a source of trouble. I don't need to worry that something bad would happen to my children just because of the color of their skin. I don't need to worry that something bad will happen to my children, not opportunity to live a full life because of what they look like. I don't need to live with the constant fear that they are in danger because of what they look like. I tell you, there are a lot of people that don't live that way. They wake up every day well aware that they don't have the right color of skin that they should have. And these people go through the life thinking that people think about them, that they are not smart, that they cannot do the work, they are doing the way that they should. They cannot always live safely or cannot have the medical care that I do just because of the color of their skin. They often don't have the, chan the chance to be measured on their abilities just because of, of the color of their skin. And they can now have often a second chance, like I do. I have second chances, third chances, four chances, and some people never had any of that. And more than anything else, they don't live scared, in the scare, scare of something really bad happening to them. Does anybody of you here wake up in the morning thinking that my, your color of your skin will actually change your life today or put you in danger or put you in a less place than everybody else around you or someone will use lurk in your, toward you because of that? My guess is not. How many times, honestly, I was thinking about that. How many times uh, uh, I turn the other way because I think that this does not affect me? How many times I'm uh, in an elevator, maybe in the hospital or a place like this, and without realizing I clutch and hold uh, on my purse because somebody of color is actually on the elevator? How many times if I see uh, someone with different color screen driving my neighbors, I get worried. Or maybe calling police because someone of color is sitting in their car not far away. Often, too often. How do you all think that this is impacting our spirit? A great deal. And uh, as Christian, we want to base our life on the scripture, on God's words. And uh, what happened in the middle in Israel during a major national crisis, and people were struggling to figure out, so what we have to do, God, to turn things around, to find healing in this polarization, in this division. And God spoke these words through the prophet Micah when he said, if you can put them on screen, 
He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. It's so simple. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. Once again, we cannot change the world in once, but we definitely can be part of those people who are taking down those barriers. And I think there are four things that we can do, I can do, you can do every day in a simple way to help this process. And number one is prayer. Actually praying to God to bring his kingdom into this world, to bring justice into this world. There's people that believe that prayer is really an excuse of not taking action. That is the most wrong way you can think. There's nothing powerful like prayer. And that prayer also is what we are called to do. Two, it's dealing with our heart. That's a tough one. And dealing with what's going on in our mind uh, when we deal with these issues. And, and I think uh, uh, changing our heart and confess our sin to God, especially when I realize that I'm stuck in that my inability to recognize that every person is made in God's image and every person has worth. Number three is to do work for reconciliation in our life, which is speaking the truth when it's necessary. But you know what? Reconciliation really starts with each of us in a little way to recreate, to reconnect, bridging relationship with people who are different from us, people that are creating uh, maybe some struggle for us. Reconciliation start right there. And remember, not just God came to reconcile us to each other, but we were called to be able to reconcile with one another. And finally, I'm gonna use this sentence from Mother Teresa who said, well, we cannot all do great things, but we can do small things with great love. And in the end of the day, are those small things done with great love that are actually going to make the big difference for us as we try personally to reconnect or support someone, make a difference in somebody else's life who is suffering with discrimination, and including him and her in my life. I know I cannot change the world, but I can sure pray God to do that, and I can do small things every day with great love to make a change, make a difference. Amen. This time uh, we enter in a time of offering and uh, uh, friends will take around the plates and we will uh, offer to God our uh, small gifts so that he can indeed multiply and reach out to all those in need. Let us now enter in this special time. Go uh, forward in this day. May indeed uh, uh, God lead us all to uh, walk humbly do justice and love mercy so that everyone can see you. Everyone that meets you will see and will see through you the very presence of Christ. May God bless you now and forever. Amen.